This screencast is on long run equilibrium PC style. The phrase that I like to use when we talk about long run equilibrium for a perfectly competitive firm is as good as it gets because it is not going to achieve this many efficiencies as it does when it is long in long run equilibrium. What you can see here by the graph when you're looking at long run equilibrium is that everything is intersecting all at this one point. You have the ATC curve, the marginal cost curve, and Mr. Darp all intersecting at the same place. And so when we're looking at this trifecta, the formula that we use is price equals marginal cost equals average total cost. Um, you can't really have different colored points talking about these different areas because it's all the same one. So we've got this one dot here and this is representing where each of these different efficiencies are happening. So the first one that we're talking about is that allocative efficiency, producing the right mix of goods. And so the formula for that is price equals marginal cost. So we have our price and our marginal cost curve intersecting at this point. You also have, um, because remember they produce where MR equals MC. And so that's how we know this is also that profit maximizing output. You also have the productive efficiency, and this is where marginal cost equals average total cost, and so you have that intersection going on right here. And then lastly, the firm in the long run breaks even, and this is where price equals ATC. And so all of these three are achieved in the long run. So what we need to look at is what's going on in the short run in order to get to this long run situation. In the short run, think of it like a snapshot. It's where we're looking and seeing how is this firm doing. In the short run, a perfectly competitive firm can either be earning economic profit or it can be suffering an economic loss. In order to determine if it's economic profit or loss, you need to use this formula of price minus ATC times quantity. And if at that, maximi that profit maximizing output of MR equals MC, price is greater than ATC, then you know that they're earning an economic profit. So if you look at this situation here, you have supply and demand intersecting and giving you this price at P. They're a price taker, and so therefore the firm is going to take the price from the industry, and they are going to have their um, marginal revenue equals demand equals average revenue equals price be at this point right here. Where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, that gives you that profit maximizing output for the firm. You can figure out that it's economic profit because at that profit maximizing output, price is greater than ATC. That's the per unit economic profit. If we're going for total economic profit, you would do price minus ATC times quantity, and it would be this, sorry, it would be this whole uh, rectangular area that you have going on here. Okay? And so what happens is that in the short run, firms are earning this economic profit and other firms kind of hear about this and, and they're all of a sudden attracted to this industry. And so in the long run, firms enter into the industry. And when firms enter into the industry, that's a determinant of supply, increase in the number of suppliers, you have a rightward shift of the supply curve and it goes here to the S2. The new intersection then of supply of S2 and D gives you down to this price here of P1. Again, the firm is a price taker. They take the price from the industry, which is shown here by this dotted arrow. And then you have this new price being established at P1. So now you have another demand curve here of marginal revenue equals demand equals average revenue equals price. And a new intersection of MR equals MC with the profit maximizing output here at Q1. And at this point here of Q1, they are having um, or they're achieving the break even point because price equals ATC. So firms will enter into this industry in the long run up until the point where price equals ATC and firms break even. Because other firms are entering into this industry, then what happens though to the initial firm is that their quantity, their profit maximizing output is going to decrease. Um, if you think about it, there's only so much that the consumers need because their demand's not changing. And so, uh, you know, the demand curve's not increasing at the same time. And so they have to kind of give up some of their quantity in order to give it to the other firms that are entering into this industry. 
The other situation here is where you have a firm suffering an economic loss. Again, what we're looking at here is the relationship between price and ATC. And when a firm is suffering an economic loss, what you can see here is that the price is less than the ATC. And so when you do the math of price minus ATC times quantity, you're going to get a negative number. So if we look at this situation that's provided here, you have the supply and the demand curve, S1 and D, intersecting. And that's giving you, again, the price taker is taking this price from the industry, and they are at P1. When you look at um, Mr. Darp here, where marginal revenue equals demand equals average revenue, where it is intersecting the marginal cost curve is here at Q1. And so when you're looking to see the relationship between price and ATC, you can see that price is above ATC. So the area of economic loss is price minus ATC times quantity, and it would be this gray shaded area. So what happens here is that in the short run, the snapshot, you have an economic loss. Well, firms are going to leave the industry because they're not going to be able to survive with this economic loss. And firms will leave up until the point where the new price that is established by this decrease in the number of suppliers is creating that break-even point again. And so you have firms that are leaving the industry. It shifts the supply curve to S2 and creates a P2. You then have a new MR equals demand equals average revenue equals price. And then you have the um, marginal cost curve and the ATC and the price all intersecting at this point. And so price equals ATC where they are breaking even. And the important thing to point out here about firms entering and exiting the industry is that they are able to do that because it's so easy. You know, you don't have to advertise in the perfectly competitive because you don't have a brand name. You're just having a product here or a commodity. And so that's what allows firms to break even in the long run is, the, is because they have that easy entry and exit. Okay, now, if we were just to review some of our other formulas that we have, profit maximizing output, that formula is MR equals MC. Um, what we see here is that a perfectly competitive firm is always allocatively efficient. That formula is price equals marginal cost. Because they are having a price equal to marginal revenue and they um, produce at MR equals MC, that is why they always achieve allocative efficiency, whether it's the short run or whether it's the long run. The other one that we've always talked about is um, the productive efficiency, which is where you're producing goods as cheaply as possible. The formula for that is marginal cost equals ATC. And so you can see here in the long run, they um, are achieving productive efficiency. In the short run, they are not, and they never will. The only thing that they achieve in the short run is allocative efficiency. It's in the short run where you get that trifecta of um, allocative efficiency, productive efficiency, and break-even. And then one more time, the formula for break-even is price equals ATC. So you want to be able to make sure that you recognize economic profit and economic loss and then what it takes for a firm to do in the long run in order to achieve the break-even point where they have that equilibrium, long run equilibrium.